all'educazione all anche eh, da remoto. Uh, XPRIZE è un open source software, uh, English, Italian? Yeah, English. Yeah, English. English. Okay. Uh, open source software to teach children with no access to quality education, uh, basic reading, writing, and mathematics, right? Yes. yes. Okay, thank Go you. Ahead. I'm sorry I have to do my presentation in English, um, but we'll, we'll get through it. So thank you for having me here. It's wonderful to be here. This is a conference about big ideas and technology, and that's exactly what XPRIZE is about, and I'm very excited to tell you a little bit about that. Now, in 2012, I was an officer with the United States Army, and I deployed to Afghanistan. I was in a beautiful part of the country, Kunar province. You can see it's mountainous, it's green. Uh, it's in the northeastern part of the country, but this beautiful landscape could not mask some of the tragedies of war and violence. And the villagers in this valley, they had many challenges to deal with, but one of the things that struck me the most were the children. So these children had to travel long distances to go to school. They had to go through very dangerous areas to get to school, but they did it every day because they wanted a better future. However, when they got to school, there were no resources at the school, no books, and there were not enough teachers. And so these kids were sometimes risking their lives to get to school every single day, a lot of hardship, and they weren't actually learning anything. So this was, you know, they, you know they're losing their future. And so I was dealing with many other challenges, but this struck me as something that, you know, something needed to be done, but I didn't know what to do. So I got out of the Army, didn't know if I'd ever be able to do anything about it, but then I joined a company called XPRIZE. XPRIZE is about harnessing the power of the crowd through competition to help solve some of the world's biggest challenges. So our massive transformative purpose, this is the, you know, the big term for a lot of the startups now in Silicon Valley, what are, what are you trying to do in the world as a company? So we're trying to transform how people think about the world's biggest problems and incentivize their solutions. XPRIZE is built on a very simple but powerful, uplifting, inspirational concept that somewhere in the world Someone out there has the skills, the knowledge, and the ability to solve the world's biggest challenges. They might just not know about it yet. So what a competition does is that we set up, we look at grand challenges around the world, and we try to figure out how can we turn part of that grand challenge into a competition and then get people to actually compete for it. So we put up a big, big prize purse that gets people's attention. We do a lot of media outreach. And then we set out these uh, designs, and then people will come to us, and then they will try to compete, and they are the ones that are, are uh, b finding the, the new breakthrough technologies. So prizes are not new. Prizes are, go back hundreds of years, and there's some great prizes. So the story goes that our founder, Peter Diamandis, he was reading a book about, called The Spirit of St. Louis. The Spirit of St. Louis was the plane that Charles Lindbergh used to fly across the Atlantic. Now, many people don't realize that Lindbergh did that as part of a competition. So he flew from New York to Paris, became arguably the most famous person in the world, and spurred a multi-billion dollar commercial flight industry, which is what we have today. And so our founder was reading this, Peter, and he said, well, I want to be an astronaut, I want to go to space, but we don't have any commercial space flight industry. So why don't I try to do a prize? So the very first X Prize came about, it's the Ansari X Prize, and it was won by what's today Virgin Galactic, and you can see the winning, uh, the winning ship, Spaceship One, is actually hanging next to the Spirit of St. Louis in the uh, Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. And so today, if you look around, the commercial space industry is a multi-billion dollar industry. SpaceX, Blue Origin, Virgin Galactic, they're all competing about uh, having private companies do things in space. So it's a way to spur new innovation into an, an industry that wasn't there before. So, XPRIZE was very successful with the first XPRIZE, and so they said, wow, let's try to do this for some other areas. So now we have other active competitions that are going on. So we have the Google Lunar XPRIZE. This is to build a rover and send it to the moon, completely funded by private money. We have the Qualcomm Tricorder XPRIZE. This is to develop uh, what in Star Trek was the Tricorder, so it can be, it's a personal diagnostic for healthcare. We have the Global Learning XPRIZE, which I'll tell you more about. The Adult Literacy X Prize, which I also work on. This is a mobile app for adults so that they can learn how to read. We have the Shell Ocean Discovery X Prize, one of our new X Prizes about autonomous underwater vehicles that can map the bottom of the ocean to a degree and scale 
that has been unprecedented because the ocean is a big place and there's a lot that we don't know about it. And then we also have the Carbon X Prize. So the Carbon X Prize is challenging teams to develop a way to capture the carbon emissions from a, a power plant and turn it into something that you can actually sell, so to create a market there. So, but I really work on the Global Learning X Prize, and, I, and for me, this is a prize that will, can really change the world. And I'll tell you why. There are 57 million children around the world who don't go to primary school because they don't have access to primary school. There are 250 million children around the world who go to primary school, but they never learn all the basics, reading, writing, and math, because there's not enough teachers, or the teachers barely know more than the students. There's a whole host of reasons why this is the case. That means that our global education system is failing hundreds of millions of children around the world. We can do better. So Elon Musk, uh, one of our supporters, he came up to our founder, Peter, uh, several years ago, and he said, here's a $15 million check. I want kids to read. That's what he told us. So we created the Global Learning X Prize. A little bit hard to read, but I'll, I'll, I'll explain it. So, it's a $15 million competition to develop open source learning software for children who lack access to quality uh, education, and it's to teach them reading, writing, and math. So how it works is that we have almost 200 teams that signed up from over 30 countries. They are currently developing their solutions, and in November, they're gonna turn in their entries. They have to turn in a full version in English and a full version in Swahili, and I'll tell you why. But first, so we're gonna get down to five finalists, and each of the five finalists will receive a million dollars. We're gonna put, that, put those five finalists through a 18-month uh, field test, and then the best team there is gonna receive an additional $10 million. So some of the important parts here is that, well, first, it's software. So this is gonna be on a tablet. This is for a mobile device. So you're gonna put education, full education, full basic education onto a mobile device. And it's open source because we want anybody to be able to take the best solutions, change them, put them in a new language, change the cultural context and the images, and use them all over the world sustainably. So the top five teams will have to release all their code and content under select open source licenses. So that's a really important way of why this is gonna spread. And so in order to demonstrate that their software can do that, they have to turn in both English and Swahili and we are gonna do the field test in rural Tanzania in Swahili for 18 months. So XPRIZE has taken upon itself a giant field test, 18 months, several thousand children, hundreds of villages, because we wanna demonstrate that a child can actually teach herself how to read, write, and do basic math. So imagine a time when you know, the little Afghan girl that I showed you before, you know, she doesn't have, she could learn how to read in the, in the safety of her house. She doesn't have to go through a dangerous area to get there. These children, these are uh, in Ethiopia. Imagine a time when they can have a world-class education in their hands and not be disadvantaged because they were born into a very rural, very remote village in Ethiopia. So in the future, what we're trying to accomplish is that every child can read. Imagine what that would do to the world if every child can read, and then think about all the things that could happen because of that, all the human potential that is gonna be able to connect to the internet as that becomes more and more widespread and probably soon free for everyone, uh, to be able to access all of human history and all of human knowledge, first you have to be able to read. And so we are hoping that we can help spur the development of a world-class education in a tablet. 